Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to Tom Campbell. Thank you, Vass, for the very nice introduction. I'm Tom Campbell. The subject uh, tonight is physics, metaphysics, and the nature of consciousness. I welcome all of you. I see a few faces that I recognize from last night. Some of you are gluttons for punishment. Um, welcome back again. Before I get started, I would like to thank Donna of Any Warner and Keith Warner and the London College of Spirituality for making all of this possible. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be invited to speak to this group. And uh, I assure you that what you're going to hear tonight is something that you have not heard before, except those of you that came last night. <laughs> to optimally understand what I'm going to tell you tonight is going to require two things of you. You need to be open-minded and you need to be skeptical. Both are very important. Open-minded because the big picture that I'm going to present tonight will require you to transcend old paradigms to leap over cultural beliefs and personal beliefs because that's the nature of breakthrough. Skeptical because without skepticism you cannot convert belief into knowledge. Okay, believing what I tell you does not create a fundamental knowing that it's true. Only experience can do that. First some introductory remarks. I was invited here because I wrote this book my Big Toe Trilogy, Unifying Philosophy, Physics, and Metaphysics. People are finding that it delivers what the cover promises, and that's been attracting some attention. And because of that attention, I ended up here tonight. I've studied consciousness from both the inside and the outside for 35 years, actually over 35 years now. And I say from the outside, that means in a laboratory setting with subjects, where you ask those subjects what experience they're having and delve into their, their consciousness. But more important, from the inside, I've studied through my own consciousness. Consciousness is personal. Consciousness is something that you cannot get the fundamental nature of intellectually. It's not something you can get in a lecture or read in a book. It's something you have to experience. I'm also a physicist. And as such, I've carried my scientific attitude and scientific uh, approach to my study of consciousness. Unfortunately, that seems to be a rare combination. A scientist who is also a seasoned explorer of inner space and one who has taken his scientific methodology and tools with him. You know, I'm going to show you a lot of charts tonight. There's 38 charts, and I don't want you to feel obligated to read them. Okay, I'll tell you everything that you need to know. The charts um, are there for three reasons. One, they're there for me so that they keep me straight on what it is I'm going to say and the order I'm going to say it in. They're there for you because these days, particularly in big urban centers like this, we find that our attention spans are growing shorter and we learn to parallel process all the time. So for those of you who parallel process, that means do more than two things at once continually. These charts will give you something to do while you listen to me. The last reason is for the record. It's important that uh, when the words are no longer bouncing off the walls that a record remains that other people can pick up and read and actually make sense out of. And just a few pretty pictures and a couple of words don't do that. So there's a lot of words on these charts. Sometimes the charts will say basically what I'm saying, and sometimes they won't. But look at them if you, if you wish. But if you just listen, you'll get it all just the same. Okay, the lecture charts will be available. You'll be able to get them on the website, and you'll be able to get uh, them from uh, the College of Spirituality. Also, uh, we're doing videos here, you see, and the videos will be available. It'll probably show up on YouTube, or you can get it at my website, or again, you can get it through the College of Spirituality. So that will probably be a month before that will be available. It should be available then. Please hold your questions till the end. It's going to be a big rush for me to get through this in 90 minutes. I'm going to talk fast. I'm going to start slow so that you'll get used to the funny way I speak English. But uh, I'm going to speed up as I go. And um, if you have trouble following me or if you have trouble hearing or there's some sort of issue like that, please just raise your hand, wave it in the air, and I'll try to, I'll try to slow down or enunciate more clearly or something to accommodate. Uh, I won't have 
the ability to do anything tonight except skim over the top. We're going to talk about some of the results and conclusions, some of the, um, the fundamental principles here, but the logic and the science that backs these up will have to be gotten into books. That's just too much. I can't get into all of that. After all, that did take about 850 pages, and I can't do that in 90 minutes. I can't talk that fast. So remember, you're just skimming over the top here, and there'll be a lot of things that won't have any logical backing, but there is logical backing. There's nothing I'm going to tell you that doesn't have a good logical or scientific backing behind it. Okay. Okay, let's get started. Uh, a toe means theory of everything. Now, Einstein started the first toe, or the first scientific toe, anyway. It was called unified field theory. And what he was trying to do was to get a one overarching understanding, one set of equations that combined or that could derive both gener general relativity and quantum mechanics. Those were the two big, and still are, the two big areas of science that define what reality is like. Well, he failed. He did not... He did not succeed. He worked on it the whole last half of his career, about 20 years or so. He worked on this problem, and he got very close. He got to where he knew where the answer laid. He could tell that it had to be this way. It was through that door. He got right up to the doorway, but he couldn't open it. He couldn't quite uh, get there, but I'll read you some quotes from him a little later that uh, will show you the ideas he had where he got stopped. Okay. Now, Einstein had to produce a toe that described all objective experience. That was what he was looking for. I would call that a little toe and a little picture that gets described all objective experience. A big toe has to describe all experience, not just objective experience. That means subjective experience. Okay, that's a big picture. Okay, objective experience is all about the stuff. Subjective experience is about the meaning and the significance, the point, the purpose. Objective experience is about what we do, what we see, touch, hear, smell. Subjective experience is why we do it. You know, what's the significance of it to us? It's about who we are, the person that lives inside. Now, some scientists believe that only the little picture is real, that the subjective is not real. Other scientists believe that the subjective may be real, but it's just not important because science can't deal with the subjective. It can only deal with the objective. Okay. The opposite is true. The subjective is fundamentally more real than is the objective. Okay. Now, for most of us, we understand that. In other words, the meaning, the significance, the point and purpose of our lives, you know, who we are, the person that lives inside, why we do what we do we have an intuitive sense that this is what's really important in our life, not the stuff. The stuff is really just a stage in the props upon which what is significant in us acts out our story. Okay. Oh, that reminds me to start this. Okay. All right. I'll try to keep us on time. I don't want to eat into your question and answer session. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about logical sets and systems. First, uh, take a look at this chart. 